Hey, hey, welcome to Digging Into the Bible. My name is Jim Barnard. This is a production of Tiller Coaching. All right, well, it's day 77. Thank you for joining me. Uh, today, we are finally to the moment. It is the crucifixion, and man, it's hard to believe that this moment is real. Um, I don't know, this is maybe a messed up thought, but do you ever like stop and think, like, well, why then? What was it about that time period that... Uh, the father had to send the son um, to die on the cross. You know, what if what if he would have held off and it was, you know, today, like Jesus would have come and, and died. Certainly it would have been a different sort of death. Um, maybe it would have been lethal injection and we would be worshiping um, the, the symbol of, uh, of, a, of a needle, you know, a lethal injection needle. That'd be a weird symbol, right? You know, the cross is such a powerful symbol for our faith and for Christianity. Um, and I don't know why, you know, I don't know what it was about that time, but Jesus came and he came for this exact purpose. And um, as weird and hard as it is, it's, um, I'm really thankful. So with that as the backdrop, let's go ahead and dig in. Uh, this is Matthew chapter 27, starting at verse 32. As they went out, they found a man of Cyrene, Simon by name. They compelled this man to carry his cross, and when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull, they offered him wine to drink mixed with gall, but when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his garments among them by casting lots. Then they sat down and kept watch over him there, and over his head they put the charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then two robbers were crucified with him, one on the right and one on the left. And those who passed by uh, derided him, wagging their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself. If you are the son of God, come down from the cross. So also the chief priests with the scribes and elders mocked him, saying, He saved others, but he cannot save himself. He is the king of Israel. Let him come down now from the cross, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. <laughs> Let God deliver him now, if he desires him. For he said, I am the son of God. And the robbers who were crucified with him also reviled him in the same way. Man, what a shame. What, what a, a travesty. I, I think there actually is, though, some logic to the thought process that these people are mocking Jesus with, like, okay, you did all these great miracles and healings and just amazing things, but man, that must have been trickery. That must have been um, sorcery or something, some kind of sleight of hand that, you know, now that your hands and your feet are bound, there's nothing you can do. You can't climb down. You can't be saved. You could do everything for everyone else, but you can't do it for yourself. Huh. Some king, some son of God. Um, and all of that stuff, man, it's like, it like irks me so bad. But I, I think there is some logic. Like, why, why can't you do this for yourself? <laughs> um, well, I, I think he, he could do it for himself. But the reality is, is that he needed to do this for us. You know, the, that all of, you know, this entire story is pointing towards the cross. In fact, all of the Old Testament that, that um, Matthew is so eloquently calling back to points to the cross and the crucifixion and our need for it. You know, we have no ability to save ourselves. It's like, hey, Jesus, save yourself. Well, guess what? Like, we, we can't save ourselves. Like, what he's doing isn't uh, like, you know, him needing to save himself. He's doing it to save us. That's a deep thought right there. And he's by no means going to climb down from, from that cross. He's not going to call out to God and say, stop it. Like, get me down from here. I mean, if he, if he, if he desired it, he could make it happen. And, I mean, truly, like, the, the call here is for, for us to find our own cross, you know, to bear. And, um, you know, Jesus twice so far in this gospel is like, you are called to, to bear your cross, to carry your cross. Uh, let me recap that. Matthew 10, verse 38, he says, And whoever does not take his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. And then verse, uh, uh, this is chapter 16, verse 24. Then Jesus told his disciples, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself 
and take up his cross and follow me. Like that's, that's the best that we can hope for, you know, like we're criticizing Jesus for his inability to save himself. But um, the ones who need saving, it's not him, it's, it's us. And if we're to save ourselves, we're to follow Jesus in the same way by taking up our cross and accepting this perfect sacrifice that, that he's made in this act of crucifixion. It's unreal, man. I just, it's hard to get your head around uh, this moment and what it actually does for us. It is a gift, truly, that, um, you know, we, we can all accept, you know, any of us, no matter who we are, or what we've done, we can, we can accept this gift that Jesus made here on the cross. So um, tomorrow we will see Jesus actually die and succumb to a death, but, but not for long. Um, and so that gives us hope. So with that, um, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. I hope that you are taking this all to heart and this is very meaningful for you because it, it's meant to. All right, I will see you tomorrow as we, I guess, celebrate. <laughs> it's the weird word to say, but celebrate the death of Jesus. I'll see you then.